The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring young America's favorite couple, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. <laughs> over to the Nelson household of 1847 Rogers Road. As we join them, Harriet is in the living room, very busy with her knitting, when Ozzy enters the room. Hello, honey. What have you been doing? You look a little beat up. Oh, I've been outside working on my victory garden. I think the birds have eaten up most of the seeds, though. Well, I thought you put up that scarecrow and he was doing such a wonderful job. That scarecrow's as good as nothing. You know what I think? What? Every time the sun comes out good and hot, he sneaks down to the corner for a short beer. <laughs> well, at least working in that garden gets you out in the sun a little. As a matter of fact, I think I'm looking pretty healthy, don't you? Of course, it was kind of a rugged winter, you know, and I still have these circles under my eyes. Mm-hmm, but they look much better now. They used to go all the way around, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what happened to the side of your face there? Oh, I cut it shading as usual. Hey, which reminds me, were you sharpening pencils with my straight razor yesterday? Of course not, dear. Are you positive? Certainly. I had an awful time with a blade this morning. I'll bet somebody was sharpening pencils with it yesterday. Ozzie, that's absolutely impossible, because I had it with me in the garden all day yesterday, cutting out weeds. <laughs> now, look, honey, a razor blade is only for shaving. When I put shaving cream on my face and I get it good and lathered... And then I run the razor over my whiskers. Yes. I like to cut them off, not line them up. (laughs) Now, the only thing for me to do is get an electric razor, I guess. Yeah, it's a good idea. It'll make weeding the garden so much faster. No, fine. (laughs) Say, will you look through that bundle of old clothes before I get them to the relief? Okay. Hmm. Hey, where'd you find this stuff, anyway? Most of it was in the attic. Oh. Oh, boy, where did this long woolen underwear come from? Well, don't you remember? You bought those for yourself when we were first married. Oh, yeah. I really started from scratch, didn't I? <laughs> oh, honey, wait a minute. Don't give this away. This is my old football suit. Oh, what memories. Oh, fo- hey, I can't find my shoulder pads here. wonder where the shoulder pads are. Well, don't you remember, honey? Last year, you asked me to sew them in your sport coat. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, uh... Uh, I'm kind of tired. That working in the garden must have done me in. Ozzie, look out. You're sitting on the... Oh! Knitting needle. Why in the world do you always leave knitting needles on the chair point up? I don't know why you insist on knitting anyway. I'll admit you make good pies and you bake good cakes. Well, for your information, I'm getting pretty darn good at this, too. 
I've been knitting so much lately, I knit with my eyes closed. I think that's how you knitted that last sweater for me, with your eyes closed. <laughs> well, so what if I did make it a little large? I thought you'd grow into it. <laughs> Harriet, I may get a little heavier, but my arms aren't going to get two feet longer. <laughs> Well, couldn't you roll the sleeves up? Oh, I like it where I have it now, as a throw rug in my den. <laughs> well, don't worry, because this one doesn't happen to be for you. You know, I never will forget that first sweater you knitted for me. Remember, you knitted the back and the front and the sleeves all separately, and then you didn't know how to put it together? I finally did manage, though. So. Yeah, it was so hard to wear. That scotch tape kept coming off. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was your own idea. Hey, that sure is a small sweater you're knitting there. Who's that for, a midget? You'll find out when I'm ready to tell you not before. It happens to be a little surprise. Oh, my goodness, look at the time. I'm supposed to be downtown. Here, give me that sweater. Stop looking so puzzled. It's supposed to be a surprise. See you later, dear. Gee, I wonder what it... Well, of course. Knitting a little sweater. So that's her surprise. Oh, ho! <laughs> and that Bing Crosby thinks he's so smart. <laughs> Come in. Oh, hello, Emmy Lou. Come on in. Oh, don't get up, please, Mr. Nelson. I just stopped in to see how Mrs. Nelson likes my new hairdo. Well, I'm awful sorry, Emmy Lou, but she just went downtown. However, if you'd like the opinion of a slightly aging juvenile, I should say it looks super. Uh, oh, thank you, Mr. Nelson. Got a big date for tonight? Well, sort of. It seems that this boy is stationed near here, and his mother is a friend of mother and daddy, one of those things. He's a terribly nice boy, but I feel like I'm sort of robbing the cradle. Oh, he's pretty young, hey? Young? He's practically a child. But he's in the Army? Yes. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, I won't tell anybody. But I do have a little secret for you. Oh, really? What is it? Oh, I don't know, though. This has to be kept a secret, and you sort of have that, oh, just wait until I run over and tell the girls in the sorority, look in your eye. <laughs> oh, no, Mr. Nelson, tell me, please. Well, it seems there's going to be a new arrival at the Nelson household. A baby? Mm -hmm. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Oh, wait till I tell... Oh, Mr. Nelson. <laughs> How can anybody possibly keep a secret like that? When did Mrs. Nelson tell you? Well, as a matter of fact, she didn't yet. You see, she's trying to pull a big surprise, but I'm a little too smart for her. I happen to see her knitting a little sweater, you see, and... What's the matter, Mr. Nelson? Uh, nothing. Just a little dizziness. It'll pass. <laughs> And as I said, I, I noticed her knitting this tiny garment, you see, and... Oh, I'm sorry, would you care for one of these pickles? All of a sudden, I seem to have a craving for them. I would... <laughs> no, thanks. Oh, well, anyway, here's what I'm going to do. You see, I'm going down to the department store and buy a complete outfit of baby stuff. You know, all the clothes and all the... Uh, everything, you see? Oh, I catch. And then when she tells you what the surprise <laughs> is... You can prove that you knew it all along. Right. Has the busy spell gone, Mr. Nelson? Oh, don't worry about me. I've been a father twice, you know. <laughs> oh, yes, I know. Let me see. Ricky is five and David's about eight now, isn't he? That's right. And gosh, you know, it seems like yesterday that Harriet was singing that song they wrote for David when he was a baby. I remember the night she introduced it. It was on Bing's program. Of his father and his mother and his sister and his brother and his cousins and his aunt. Nobody else but the kid in the three cornered pan. Who's the ruler of the kitchen and the parlor and the bedroom? Every corner where his little feet can dance. Nobody else but the kid in the three cornered pan. When it's nice and quiet, who's the little lad? Likes to start a riot because it's fun being bad. Who's the perfect little resident who's 
going to be the president. Why, anyone can tell you at a glance. Nobody else but the kid in the three-cornered pants. Who's the loudest little shouter? Who's the cutest little powder? To his sisters and his cousins and his aunts. Nobody else but the kid in the three-cornered pants. And from breakfast time till supper, who's the leading breaker-upper of the furniture, the dishes, and the plan? Nobody else but the kid in the three-cornered pan. He's the sun above us. He's the moon and stars. Long as he will love us, this whole wide world will be ours. He's a naughty little rascal. He's a nuisance, but we wouldn't take a million for him if we had the chance. That's what we think of the kid in the three-cornered pants. Wonderful song, Mr. Nelson. And now with this little stranger arriving, the song will be new all over again. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Oh, say, if you want to get those baby things before the store closes, you better hurry. Oh, you're right. Well, thanks. I'll be on the way. Goodbye, Emmy Lou. Goodbye, Mr. Nelson. <laughs> Third floor, sporting goods, men's clothing, boots and shoes. Have your coupons ready. <laughs> hey, uh, don't you want to get off here, mister? Uh, no, thanks. I'm going to the next floor. That's the last one, I believe. Well, uh, I don't like to seem personal, but uh, the next floor is the maternity department. Well, it probably seems strange, but I'm going to surprise my wife. <laughs> You're going to surprise your wife. I wonder if there's such a thing as elevator fatigue. <laughs> oh, well, up we go. I guess I didn't make myself very clear. You see, my wife doesn't think I know about it, but I saw her knitting a little sweater. Oh, knitting a little sweater, hey? Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, what color? Uh, why do you ask? Well, if it was blue, she's expecting a boy. And if it was pink, she's expecting a girl. Oh. Uh, what color was it? Uh, green. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a devil-may-care attitude. <laughs> well, so long, and uh, congratulations. Oh, thanks. I'd give you a cigar, but I don't have one with me. They're so hard to get these days, you yeah, know. Yeah, ain't it the truth? Hey, did you hear the one about the guy who found his favorite brand of cigars? He was so happy, he went around giving away his children. <laughs> <laughs> well, so long, bud. Don't take no wooden diapers. <laughs> Very funny, wooden diapers. He doesn't know, but that's what they're making them out of now. Gosh, this might be a little embarrassing. Look at all the women. Nothing on this floor but women. I bet I'm the May only... May I help you, sir? Oh, well, I, that is... Well, yes, I'm going to have a baby. Uh, well, why come here? Have you tried Hobby Lobby? <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking, of course. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I am a little flustered. Um, <laughs> uh, haven't you ever been a father before? Oh, yes, twice. We have two boys now. I see. Are they in the service? <laughs> No, no, they're just five years and eight years old. Oh, right? yes, of course. Well, now, what can I do for you? Well, I want to buy some of the regular baby things. Well, this is the baby department. See anything you want? Well, uh, I really don't know. Well, how about a bassinet? A bassinet? Mm-hmm. Could you use a bassinet? Uh, well, yes, I guess so. <laughs> Now, uh, what else should a baby have these days? <laughs> sure. Well, how about some rubber pants? Rubber pants? Yes, that sounds good. It does rain quite a bit here in California. <laughs> oh, brother. 
Well, let's see. What else? Uh, uh, let me... Oh, I tell you, I'll take some of those little nighties up there. Uh-huh. And some of these little shirties. <laughs> and a few blankets and some of those three-cornered pants. You better make those king size. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Talcum powder. Talcum powder? Oh, no, he won't shave for a long time. <laughs> oh, brother. Or did I say that before? Uh, will that be all, then? Uh, yes, I guess I'll be fine. And will you send them out to the house, please? The name is Nelson. Okay. And the address? Uh, 1847 Rogers Road. Rogers Road. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Nelson. And I'll bet the baby will look just like you. Well, we won't care as long as he's healthy. <laughs> <laughs> I hope my wife doesn't buy all the same things I just bought. I think she's out making preparations for the new arrival, too. Good afternoon, Mrs. Nelson. May I help you? Yes, thank you. <laughs> now, don't tell me you've finished knitting the little sweater already. Well, no, not yet. Be- but before I went any further, I want to make sure I was making the sweater in the right side. Mm-hmm. Well, you're perfectly welcome to check for yourself. He's in the left-hand cage, the third cocker spaniel from the end. <laughs> oh, thanks. I can't wait till we get him home. He's the cutest little dog in your store. <laughs> well, say, does your husband know about the surprise yet? Well, he was getting a little suspicious, so I did hint about the new arrival. Uh-huh. But I didn't say whether it was going to be a cat or a dog or a parrot, so I'm sure he doesn't know what kind of an animal to expect. Well, <laughs> I see. I'll send the dog over whenever you notify me. I hope your husband will be surprised. Oh, I'm sure he will. Goodbye. <laughs> Ozzie will be surprised, and Harriet will be too, if in a somewhat different way. Now, during the intermission, Ozzie Nelson will double in brass and step into the pit to lead his orchestra. Now back to Ozzie and Harriet. 
To put it mildly, things have gotten pretty confused with the occupants of 1847 Rogers Road since Ozzie walked in and saw Harriet knitting a sweater for the Cocker Spaniel she's purchased. As a matter of fact, Ozzie is still out shopping for baby things. As our scene opens, Harriet is phoning the pet shop. Hello? Hello? And this is Mr. Kern. Uh, this is Mrs. Ozzie Nelson. You left word for me to phone you. Oh, yes. I'm sorry to trouble you, Mrs. Nelson. I trouble you, Mrs. Nelson. Oh, darn that parrot. Why, Carter? Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Nelson. Oh, I understand. But what is it, Mr. Kearns? I hope my puppy's all right. Oh, yes, yes. He's fine. But uh, I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. I'm only the clerk here, you understand. And uh, the owner has just informed me that the Cocker Spaniel you chose cannot be sold without his sister. They've been together since they were born, and he wants to keep them together. Uh, Naturally, I'll refund your deposit. Unless, of course, you're willing to take both of them. Oh, well, gee, I'm really crazy about that little Cocker Spaniel, and I've already promised my husband a surprise. Oh, I guess it'll be all right. I'll take both of them. Oh, fine. I'm so glad. I'll keep them here till you want them, Mrs. Nelson. Thank you. Goodbye. 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 Oh, shut up. Shut up! Well, looks like Ozzy's going to get a double surprise. Oh, Gloria. Gloria. Can you call me Mrs. Nelson? (laughs) Yes, I did, Gloria. I just found out that the little cocker spaniel I was going to buy has a twin sister. So I'm going to take both of them. Oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just about finished knitting one of the little sweaters, and, well, I wondered if you'd help me with the other. Oh, I'd be glad to. Oh, thanks, sir. <laughs> now, remember now, don't you say anything to Mr. Nelson, because it's supposed to be a surprise. Big secret. Oh, you can depend on me, Mrs. Nelson. Nobody can keep a secret better than I can. You know my boyfriend, Elmer? Yes. Well, I've been secretly engaged to him for two years, and nobody knows about it. Oh, nobody at all? Not even Elmer. (laughs) Well, that's fine, Gloria. Oh, by the way, when Mr. Nelson comes in, would you tell him I'd like to see him, please? Okay. I've just been doing a little shopping. What were you buying? Well, uh, come on over here and sit down, David. Your pop wants to have a little talk with you. Okay. Well, David, you have a birthday coming up pretty soon, haven't you? Still quite a, lo- quite a ways off, Pop. Yeah, I know, but there are some things you have to plan well in advance. What do you mean, Pop? Well, I'll come right to the point. Your mother and I have been sort of talking things over... And for your birthday present, how would you like a little baby brother or sister? Well, if it's all the same to you and Mother, I'd rather have a pony. <laughs> well, I, I'm afraid a pony's a little out of the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bobby Vito just got a baby brother. Very nice one, too. Oh, really? Yeah, they got him from Dr. Brown. Say, we take from him, too, don't we? Yes. <laughs> Yes, we do, David. Uh, are you sure you wouldn't like a baby brother? You seem pretty interested. Well, I wouldn't want Bobby to think I was copying him. Maybe you'd better give me a baby sister. Oh, if you're afraid of copying Bobby, maybe we could get his mother and father to exchange their baby. Well, I don't think they'd take him back. You see, they've, they've already used him four days. <laughs> well, I tell you, think it over anyway, David, and I'll talk to you later. Oh, hello, Gloria. I'll see you later, Pop. Hello, Mr. Nielsen. Did you know that Mrs. Nelson was looking for you? Oh, no, no, I didn't. I just got home a little while ago. I had quite a day shopping. Oh, have you been shopping? I'll say. I've been to the May Company, the Broadway, Saks Fifth Avenue, and a couple of others. Oh, Saks Fifth Avenue. I used to be a sales girl there. Oh, I didn't know that, Gloria. Oh, yes. And they paid me a big honor when I worked there. Really? Yeah, I was voted Miss Sad Sacks of 1945. <laughs> oh, fine. Where is Mrs. Nelson? She's in the other room working on that little sweater. Oh, so you know about the big surprise, too, hey? Oh, yeah. And have you heard the latest developments? 
<laughs> Latest developments? There's going to be two of them. Two of them? Twins, eh? Gosh. Did I ever tell you I used to be twins? You used to be twins? Yes, my mother wrote and told me she has a picture of me when I was two. <laughs> You've been reading those old joke books again, eh, Gloria? Oh, Harriet! Yes, honey, I'm in here. Now, look, Harriet, you don't need to try to fool me any longer, because I know all about your surprise, and I think it's wonderful. Oh, darling, I'm so glad you feel that way about them. You old smarty pants, I can't keep anything from you, can I? Oh, I'm afraid I'm pretty sharp. <laughs> There's going to be two, you know. So Gloria told me, but uh, are you sure there'll be two? Oh, positive. That radar is wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> Darling, look, I want you to promise me one thing. Anything at all, little mother? Well, if they make too much noise and keep you awake, let me know, and I'll have them sleep in the garage. In the garage? Oh, yes, it'll be very comfortable. We'll get a little box with some blankets in it and put it over there by the ash can. Honestly, dear, you have a strange sense of humor sometimes. Oh, I just thought of something. Now I'd better buy a war bond for the other little fella, too. What do you mean? Well, when I heard about the little stranger coming to our house, I bought a war bond in his name. Why, Ozzy, that's silly. Silly? Oh, now, wait a minute, honey. Don't say a thing like that. Just because the war in Europe is over, don't think for a minute that we can stop buying war bonds. Because now more than ever before... Oh, Ozzy, you know me better than that. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, dear. You mean because he doesn't even have a name or anything yet? Well, I'll tell you what I did. I have a particular preference as to his name. You have? Mm-hmm. So I put the bond in his name in an envelope on your dresser. And when he arrives, you can open it up and see how you like the name I picked out for him. Well, sounds like quite a routine. Oh. <laughs> By the way, I, I haven't asked you, uh, when do you expect the little strangers will arrive? Sometime next week. Oh, next week. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Well, of course. I could have had them today. Today? <laughs> well, yes. But first, I want to make sure they had their tails clipped and they didn't have their feet. <laughs> You see, they're down at Joe's pet shop. Wait a minute. You mean you're, you're knitting that sweater for a dog? Well, of course, didn't you know that? You said that you... Ozzy, you didn't think... Oh, no, of course. Naturally, I knew it was a dog. It was... I uh... mean, some fellow just delivered a big package from a department store. It's for you, Mr. Nelson, from the baby department. From the... the, the uh, Gloria, he's got the wrong address. Just tell him to take it back. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Nelson, but I opened the package already. Oh, you opened it? Yeah, and you should see. Three dozen of the cutest little face towels. Three dozen face towels? Gloria, those aren't face towels. Wrap them up and send them back, and send back the safety pins that came with them, too. <laughs> This bed feels good. I sure did a lot of walking today. Ozzy, do you still insist that you knew all along it was going to be a little dog? Well, of course, Harriet. Anybody could tell that. Well, I know I shouldn't have done this, but... Well, I got so curious that I opened the envelope. The what envelope? The one with the war bond you bought for the dog. Oh. I think that's an awful cute name you picked out for him. Oh, thank you, dear. Mm-hmm. But won't the neighbors think it's strange that we have a Cocker Spaniel named Ozzie Nelson, Jr.? This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.